You guys know how excruciatingly hard this was for me. I picked this for the first show, and I knew it was going to be tough, but I still gritted my teeth and got it done. Over the course of their career, Carpenters released 30 official U.S. singles. And this week, I had to go through, pick them out best, worst, what I liked, what I didn't like, and rank them as best as I could. And so that's what we're doing. The 30 official U.S. singles of Carpenters. I'm T.C. Kirkham. Let's rank this. Welcome to Rank This. I'm T.C. Kirkham, the Kirkham Report, and this week I'm going to be doing Carpenters. Now, Carpenters are one of my favorite all-time acts, the top three, Carpenters, Hanson, Def Leppard. You'll be hearing all of them on this show in the next few weeks. But for this week and next week, I'm going to focus on Carpenters. Um, over the years, um, between 1969 and 1989, Carpenters released 30 official A-side singles in America. Uh, there may have been 31, but I'm not sure about that 31st one, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, but they definitely had 30 released. I think 28 of them charted. Only two of them missed the – three or four of them missed the Hot 100, and I think only two of them missed the AC chart or Easy Listening chart, as it was known during the first part of their career. Uh, what I've done is I've gone through and I've picked my favorite songs, why I ranked it that way and whatever – so these are based on my personal taste, not by quality or anything, although quality does play into it in this case because I'm an unabashed Carpenters fan. Now, before we get started, I do want to say this includes only the officially released U.S. singles from Carpenters during regular music time. The two holiday singles, 1970's Merry Christmas, Darling, and 1974's ballad version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, are not included in this list. There are also eight songs I'm going to give what I'll call a special mention to. These are songs that were not A-sides and may not have been singles in America, but they may have been elsewhere, or they got airplay. And so these eight songs are not going to be included. In chronological order, they are Blessed the Beasts and Children, which was the flip side of Superstar, and therefore we're not going to count it on this. Um, John Belia on the Bayou from Now and Then, released in 1973 all over the world except North America as a single. Uh, it was the follow-up to Yesterday Once More, I believe. Um, number three also from Now and Then, This Masquerade. The Carpenter's version of this got... Two different spurts of airplay on easy listening and what they called beautiful music stations back then. Um, right after it came out on Then and Now and again in 1975 when it was released as the B-side to Please Mr. Postman. Um, <clears throat> a full three years it was getting airplay from now and then before George Benson's hit version in 1976 and his career took off with that. Number four, Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Their version of the Neil Sadaka classic from A Kind of Hush was, an, was a single in Japan, not in America. Um, now is the first of two songs that is not an official single that I know of. Some sources indicate now as the final single by Carpenters uh, from the, the last album released right after Karen's passing in 1983. Uh, now does not get listed in the Wikipedia, nor is it listed in Carpenter's The Definitive Collection, which is the um, the book that I got for, my, uh, for Christmas last year from Kim. Nothing about that, and that's Richard Carpenter is involved with that book, so he would know. Um, if I Had You is not included because it was billed strictly as Karen Carpenter. The same goes for the earlier single, Looking for Love, which was way back in 1966. 
Um, Slow Dance from Love Lines, released in 1989, recorded in 1978, was never released as a single, but it did get some airplay on AC and, and light pop stations in 1989 and 1990. The other one that I'm not sure about is Let Me Be The One, the version that's included on the box set for the top, from the top, which was released in 1991, I believe. Um... The difference between this song and the original release from uh, the Tan album, Carpenters, is that it includes some little diddling at the end of the song where Karen's making fun of the way she sang it. Um, I want to say I have a cassette single of that song, but I don't have my cassette singles here. They're in storage over at the storage unit, and so I can't check for sure. But I thought I did. I know I have if I had you. So that might be what I'm getting confused with. But I thought that came out as a cassette single. But again, it's not listed in Wikipedia or the Carpenter's book. So I'm going to assume if it was, it was a radio-only single. So those are the eight songs that are out of the way. Now, <coughs> let's rank the 30 official songs from Carpenter's. These were released on 45 commercially or cassette single, or CD single, commercially, between 1969 and 1989, which was six years after Karen's passing. Several of these songs were released posthumously, and I will note that as we go on. The first of the posthumous songs is at number 30 on my ranked list, Honolulu City Nights. It was recorded in the early part of 1980, I believe, for the Made in America se sessions, but it never uh, was released during Karen's lifetime and was released on a single in 1986. It was later included on the Love Lines collection in 1989. Um, there's just something about this song I'm not really fond of. I don't... It's not Karen's vocal. It's fantastic. It's just the song in general I'm not a really big fan of. I've heard it by a couple of artists who perform it regularly in, in Hawaii, I, I, I don't know. The song just doesn't do anything for me. Karen and Richard help that a bit because it's Karen and Richard. But um, overall, I'm just not the biggest fan of Honolulu City Lights, and that's why it's at number 30. Number 29 on my list, song that should have never been released as a single. Uh, I don't agree with why it was released as a single. There was no chance of recapturing the magic of Please, Mr. Postman. Number 29, Beachwood 45789, released as a single in early 1982 from Made in America, which came out in 1981. It was the fourth and final single from that album. I would have went with a couple of other songs from that album myself. Um, I don't particularly care for this. It's I know Karen and Richard love doing the oldies that they remember when they were kids back in the late 50s and early 60s. And I, I don't quite know what it is about this song it's just a very pale imitation of please mr postman which they did a fantastic job with and i i don't i just i never cared for it i'll listen to it when i'm listening to made in america but i don't play play it as a single i i probably charted on the tkr charts i don't remember off the top of my head i'd have to go look it up but um most of the Carpenter stuff did, and most of it hit number one over the years, but um, I don't think that one did, so it's at number 29. Number 28 on my rank this list of Carpenter's official singles is I Believe You from 1978. It was released in that period between the end of the singles from Passage in 1977 and what would become Made in America in 1981. It was almost three years between albums and they released this song in the fall of 1978. It did not do well. 1978 was not a good year to, to, to do a typical Carpenter's ballad because ballads just weren't hitting that big um, unless they were by the Bee Gees or connected to Saturday Night Fever, or one of the other disco movies. Uh, 1978 was not a good year for our Carpenters release, and I believe you um, is that. Not that the song is bad. It's a beautiful take on the, on the song that was a hit two years earlier by Dorothy Moore on the R&B chart, and um, absolutely fantastic all the way through. Um, but it just... I don't know. It, it, there was The timing was bad, and it didn't really click. Um, I, I think it peaked at number 60. I didn't write the peak numbers down here. It peaked in the 60s on the Hot 100 and in 
didn't do much better on the AC chart. It's a great song, and Karen's reading of the song is fantastic, but um, it's it's there's so much better. Let's put it that way. Number 28, I Believe You, from Made in America, eventually. But it was a single only for three years, from 1978. Number 27 on my list, another song I wouldn't necessarily have chosen as a single candidate from Made, Amer- Made in America, 1981's uh, Those Good Old Dreams. Um, Made in America, there was some... This I, I mentioned in my influencers back at the beginning of the year that it wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be considering we had to wait three years for it between um, Passage and uh, four years actually between Passage and Made in America Um, and they just except for the lead off single they didn't really click with the singles and um, Those Good Old Dreams is a classic Carpenter's Ballad you know mid tempo got a little bit of country in it has a lot of top of the world vibe into it but it just wasn't um, it wasn't up to the standard that they had in the mid seventies, and I I um, I like the song fine. It's it's pleasing, but it's not definitely not one of my favorites. And it is at number twenty seven uh, on my list of Carpenter's official singles. These good old dreams. At number twenty six is the third of the four singles from Made in America. Want you back in my life again with want you in. Uh, parentheses um, this was a great song up to a point I mean Karen's vocal is fine for me this song is marred because I've seen the performance of it on the Merv Griffin show Karen is visibly ill during that per, during that performance watching that performance is painful and I also don't like the way that they gave Richard the credit for being the keyboardist on that song when on the album and everybody else knows that on the album the the synthesizers were played by Daryl Dragon of the Captain Sneal. Um I, I don't like the way that A and M marketed that when they went to television. They could have just had Daryl come in and guest with them or something. I mean for the Merv Griffin performance maybe that's okay. But overall I just thought that was kind of cheap, especially since Karen and Tony were good friends. They were both on A&M for years. So um, I I just didn't like the way they did that. The song itself, um, Karen did disco better on her solo album that wouldn't be released until until 1996. Um, This particular song, which has a sort of disco feel to it, it's okay, but it's not great. Number 26, Want You Back in My Life Again from Made in America. Number 25, and this is going to seem kind of low for some people because I love this album, despite the fact that it's not one of their favorites for most fans, is There's a Kind of Hush All Over the World from A Kind of Hush, released in 1976. This album is a lot better than people give it credit for. And the title single is a great cover of the Herman's Hermits classic from 1966. Um, I think Karen and Richard gave it the typical Carpenter's treatment here, and it came out sounding great. I think too many people are too critical of not just this song, but of the album. And I think there are classics on that album that other people don't really see as classics. I do. I like them a lot, and I will talk about them next week. Um, but I, I really I like this. Again, it's just one of the, those Carpenter songs that is pleasing enough, and it's well done. There's just so much that I above it that I can't really say it's super high. But it's like Eurovision. You know, some songs I like end up in the 20s and 30s because there's so much good stuff. Number 25. There's a kind of hush all over the world from a kind of hush. Number 24, again, this is a, uh, an instance of getting beat to the punch. Number 24 is I Won't Last a Day Without You. Um, originally from a song for you, I believe. Uh, released finally as a single in the summer, late summer, late summer of 1974. Between the singles that should come out the previous Christmas and Horizon, which would come out in the early summer of... 1975 um 
the problem with this song, and it's a great song. Karen does a great job with it. It was great as an album track. Always wondered why it was never released as a single. Too many people beat them to the punch. Um, the song had already been out as a single. Not necessarily super successful, but it had been out as a single by songwriter Paul Williams, as well as Andy and David Williams, the twin nephews of Andy Williams, which uh, later who later became uh, the Williams brothers in the in the uh, 80s and 90s. And Marie McGovern does a killer version of this song. Um, never took off, but it was it was a single. So they were just a little bit behind, and it didn't quite make the top. 10 it peaked at number 11 or 12 and I I don't know it's it's a great song and I love the way they perform it but again there's so much that you know I would have preferred to see it come out as a single when it was on the album rather than wait so long but it was a good way to bridge the the gap between top of the world and what would become the first single from horizon please mr. poseman wasn't a too too bad of a situation um, number 24, I Won't Last a Day Without You, originally from a song for you, released as a single in 1974. Number 23, the Carole King song, It's Going to Take Some Time. This, again, came off of a song for you. Great single, great song, released in 1972. Was their first song to miss the top 10. It peaked at number 12, I believe. Um, great little song for what it was, and uh, there's a lot of great stuff. You know, I don't, like I said, Carpenters don't do a bad job of anything. It's just that sometimes I don't like the song or I don't particularly care for whatever. This song I have no problem with. Um, and I know a couple of things that are coming up are going to be like, those were ahead of it's going to take some time. But yeah, it was. Dishwalla's cover on If I Were a Carpenter, terrific. Number 23, it's going to take some time from a song for you. At number 22, I feel so bad because. As much as this song is great, and as much as I like it, I'm not overly fond of it. Now, that sounds weird, but it's Karen's favorite song of all the stuff she did. I Need to Be in Love from Kind of Hush, released in 1976. I always found it to be kind of lacking compared to some of the other ballads that they had done in the early 70s. I do like it. Don't get me wrong. I, it's a great song, and it works great on an, you know, on an oldies '70s soft rock station. Um, work, work great anywhere. If you're a Carpenters fan, you're not going to not like it. But there are songs that are better, and I'm about to get hit by one of those that people are going to be like, "That's better." To me, it is. Number twenty-three, number twenty-two. Excuse me. I need to be in love from a kind of hush. Also from A Kind of Hush, 1976, number 21, and one of the few singles they missed the top 40 with, their remake of the 1930s classic, Goofus. Now, I love this their take on this. Goofus was such an oddball song for the Carpenters to tra- tackle. At that point, they really hadn't strayed out of their comfort zone. Uh, their comfort zone was... You know, pop ballads, up-tempo little country-flavored ballads occasionally. They hadn't really strayed away from that. And then A Kind of Hush comes along, and there's this song. I think Harold Arlen wrote it from 1930s, 27 or 32 or something like that. And my mom knew the song. She had been familiar with it. It was a big band hit in the 40s. And... Wow, I just fell in love with that song. I was surprised that it didn't do that well. It peaked at number 60, I believe, maybe even lower, Um, although it did chart better on the AC chart. (laughs) But I really think people give Goofus the shaft. It should have been a bigger hit. It was a bigger hit overseas. Uh, Number 21, Goofus from A Kind of Hush. At number 20... um, Another one of the songs that was released posthumously... The song that became the first single following Karen's passing, Make Believe It's Your First Time, from Voice of the Heart, 1983. The reason this is so low is because Karen's version from her solo album is better. It's that simple. Uh, I wish that that version had been put on Voice of the Heart rather than a re-recorded version they did a year later 
from her album, which was shelved for so many years. Um, I, I really think that her reading of it, produced by Phil Ramone, was a better job. Uh, not to take away from Richard's skills as an arranger or a conductor or a producer, <clears throat> but um, I just like the original better. Number 20 from Voice of the Heart, released posthumously. Make believe it's your first time. Number 19 um, is a song that Karen hated. And I mean hated. She didn't like performing it. She didn't like recording it. She was never happy with her vocal on it. And yet I, and along, along with a lot of the critics, think it's one of her best performances. Number 19 is Solitaire from Horizon, 1975. Um, this song has been done so well. Neil Sedaka, of course, wrote it, did a great job with it. It was truly um, a surprise that their version wasn't a bigger hit. I think it peaked at number 18, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this was where they started the slight downslide. Um, I loved Karen's take on this song. The only better take on it was Clay Aiken, uh, who did it in the nineteen in the two thousand uh, two thousands after um, after American Idol. Uh, even Neil Sedaka said this is Clay's song now. It's his; he does it so well. Andy Williams did a good job of it too, but Karen's is just it hits her lower range so well, and I love the way that Richards arranged the instrumentation and stuff on it. Just fantastic. Number 19, Solitaire from Horizon, 1975. We are doing the Rank This on all the Carpenters singles, uh, official singles in the U.S., all 30 of them. And at number 18 is their very first single, Ticket to Ride from Offering, 1969. Later, the album was retitled Ticket to Ride with better artwork. The, the album cover of Offering is terrible. Karen and Richard did not take good pictures, and Richard had actually mentioned that in the book. Um, again, Richard took a great Beatles, up-tempo Beatles song and turned it into a ballad. Richard did this a number of times on their early albums. He turned Ticket to Ride into a ballad for offering slash Ticket to Ride. He turned Help into a psych number for Close to You, which was just fabulous. I love their version of Help. Um... But I like the melancholiness of this. Karen's vocal, Karen was 19, I think, when she recorded it, maybe even 18. It was a really, again, this hits her lower range, and it's just fantastic. Number 18 on my list, their earliest single from 1969, uh, offering song Ticket to Ride. At number 17, uh, <laughs> At the time when it came out, I loved it. Everything, I, when I was a kid, I, every time a Carpenter single would come out, I would be like Tony Schiavone, Tony Schiavone years ago on WCW Nitro. This is the greatest Carpenter single ever! Um, now I look back at it, and it's cute, and it's nice. Best? No. But it's really fun, and that's saying. It's at number 17. Of course, it was adapted from Sesame Street, where it was originally known from. Um, great children's chorus on this. I think it was the Jimmy Joyce children's chorus that did this with them. Um, really fun number. The, the label thought they were out of their mind. It became a top three hit. It was a monster hit for them, and deservedly so. Um, it was a great song for 1973, very up-tempo, very pop, and was the lead-off single from Now and Then, which was their all-nostalgia album. So it was, um, it was pretty cool. Um, I don't listen to it a lot anymore, but it was one of my mom's favorites. So it has a favorite in my spot, too. Uh, number 17, From Now and Then, 1973, sang from Sesame Street. At number 16, halfway up the countdown, from Lovers and Other Strangers, the song For All We Know. Um, originally from Carpenters, the Tan album, 1971. Now, their version isn't in the film, um, but Richard went to see the film one night and fell in love with the song, and they recorded it, and as a result of their recording, the song did win Best Song at the Oscars. Um, great song. Um, very... Um, I don't know. This song is melancholy and upbeat at the same time. And Karen's vocals here, 
pristine as always. She's in that early range from 69 to 72 where she was really exploring everything she could do with her voice. And this song was fantastic for it. It became one of their staple songs and one of the best known songs they did. And it deserved to. Number 16, For All We Know, from Carpenter's 1971. At number 15, um, a song that is still played on a lot of radio stations as an oldie because it is about oldies. Yesterday, Once More, uh, from Now and Then, 1973. 1973, of course, was the year of American Graffiti, or year after American Graffiti, and uh, nostalgia was everywhere. In addition to this song, which talked about all the songs they loved so well, uh, and all the every every shooby dooby doo, every ring a ling ling, and all that stuff. Um, that's not the lyrics, but you know what I mean. Um, there were oldies on the chart again. Music, Music, Music by Teresa Brewer was back in the top 40, and so was Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley in the comments. Um, it was nice to see that. And my mom, who was a big fan of 50s music, um, I, always, I was like, but these songs are old, Mom. Not the best thing to say, because she was just, just getting to 40 and not really <laughs> liking that. But the song itself... It is a very great song to reminisce with because Yesterday Once More is just fun to think about most of the time. Number 15, 1973, from now and then, Yesterday Once More. Number 14 is the highest of the posthumously released songs and I think is the best song on uh, of the singles on Voice of the Heart, Your Baby Doesn't Love You Anymore. Released eight months after Karen's passing. Um, recorded originally for the Made in America sessions, but not included on the album. Um, it's a shame because if they included that on the album and released it as a single instead of Beachwood 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, they might have actually gotten somewhere. Um, Your Baby Doesn't Love You Anymore um, did not chart on the Hot 100, but it did do well on the AC chart, number one on the TKR chart. Um, and I... I love that song, and it's one of my favorite performances by Karen, and I wish that, I really wish it would get the, the recognition that it's due, because it does deserve better than it got. Um, number 14, released posthumously again, 1983 from Voice of the Heart, Your Baby Doesn't Love You Anymore. Number 13, a classic. I will never forget their performance of it on the Carol Burnett Show, Hurting Each Other, from the, uh, from, is that from, let me see, A Song for You from 1972. Um, this was a remake of the Ruby and the Romantic song. Richard had heard it and thought it could be done their style, and he arranged it for them. And it's the only Carpenter's single, oh no, it's one of two Carpenter's singles, excuse me, that start with no intro. Even Mr. Postman has the bum 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 before she starts singing. Two songs they do have no intro and this is one of them the first thing you hear is karen singing nowhere in the world la da 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 the song the vocals on this are amazing and that you know it's just a phenomenal version of this song from 1972 hurting each other carpenters uh from a song for you um number 12 uh, I think people are going to be surprised that it's this high because it didn't do well on the pop chart and it only did marginally well on the AC chart. It did hit the top 10 on the country chart, the only appearance Carpenter's made on Billboard's country singles chart. It is from Passage, 1977's Sweet, Sweet Smile. It was released in December of 1977 and we eventually climbed to number 8 on Billboard's Hot Country Singles song uh, list. <clears throat> this song, written by Juice Newton and Otha Taylor, um, before Juice took off on her own, is just happy and fun and bubbly. You know, I gotta see your sweet, sweet smile every day. Great, great song. And <laughs> forgive my terrible singing. But it's like, you know, what I want to hear when I'm looking for fun Carpenter's music. That's one of the first things I go to. It is from the experimental album Passage, which 
I still think is better than most people do. Um, it's one of the three songs on the album that are very typical Carpenters. Let's put it that way. And I still really like... I like the country beat. I, was, I didn't know it hit the country chart until way later, a few years ago. I just assumed it bombed out on the, on the pop chart because it was a little too country. And Top of the World didn't chart on the country chart because Len Anderson had had a number one hit with it on the country chart like six months before the Carpenters finally put their single out of it. So I don't know. It's very interesting. But in any case, number 12 from Passage, um, Sweet Sweet Smile. Number 11 on my favorite official Carpenters singles is the other song that starts with no opening. And it's based on a song that was part of a movie that the lyrics or the song was never heard. It was just the biggest song that the songwriter portrayed by, I think, Bing Crosby in the movie um, had written. And Richard decided to run with it, and he got a big hit and a lot of flack for the fuzz guitars in the middle chorus. Number 11, Goodbye to Love from A Song for You, uh, 1972. Just starts off with, I'll say goodbye to love. And she'll go on with that. Always love this song. Love Tony Peluso's guitar solo in the center. A lot of people, a lot of the Carpenters fans were pissed off at them for this song. Because it had rock guitar in it. And yet Richard and Karen were into rock music. They just didn't perform it a lot. Because that's not what they performed well. They knew that. I mean, they would later do some incredible stuff, but, you know, that one was just really, really something. And uh, I, I, I think there's a little too much of the ah, 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 ahs at the end. It lasts over almost two minutes. But um, overall, it's a fantastic song, and I love it. Number 11, Goodbye to Love. Now, my top ten are the 10 Carpenter songs I do never want to be without. These are the 10 Carpenter songs I love. I will listen to them anytime. I play them all the time. I, I always think that they're some of the best stuff they ever did. Starting at number 10, from Passage, All You Get From Love is a Love Song. Love this song. One of their best songs ever. I wish it had done better on the chart. <clears throat> Again, after a kind of hush, I think they, the momentum was kind of lost. And as the leadoff single for Passage, um, it didn't really click with pop audiences, although it did hit the top 10 on the AC chart. Um, absolutely great song. Love the chorus. Very, very typical mid-70s Carpenters. And deserved better than it got. I, I really think it was a top-notch song, and I never get sick of it. Number 10, All You Get From Love is a love song from Passage, 1977. 90, and number nine on my list, From Close to You, 1970, We've Only Just Begun. Um, who doesn't love We've Only Just Begun? Um, I love their version. I love Paul Williams' version, too, on his Greatest Hits album. Great version. All acoustic and very cool. Um, this song has become a wedding staple. It still is a wedding staple. It deserves to be. It's a great song. Uh, very up, very... Let's look for the future. Let's let's keep going. And Richard and Karen at the time were just getting started on their career, just really becoming known, and the song helped propel them. I mean, it peaked at number two on the pop chart and number one on the on the AC chart, I believe, and our easy listening chart. Excuse me, easy listening. Um, it's a classic, and there's a reason for that. It will always be a wedding song, even 60 years later. It's still a top wedding song. Um, number nine, we've only just begun from Close to You, 1970. Number eight, I think this was a surprise to me when it came out, but it was awesome, and it was one of the three number one hits they had. Please, Mr. Postman from Horizon, which, um, came out in 1975. The single was released in December 1974. Um... Who doesn't like this song? I mean, this of all the Carpenter songs I talk about people, people talk to me about. We 
people who I taught Carpenters with, this song almost always comes up. It's one of the favorites. And it deserves to be. It's so bubbly. A great reworking of the, of the Marvelettes, I believe, had the hit with it in the 1960s. Terrific, terrific arrangement from Richard. Absolutely great, fun vocals from Karen, who at this time was just starting to show the effects of the early effects of anorexia, although you couldn't really see them unless you were around her all the time. Um, she didn't look sick yet overall. Um, absolutely fantastic vocal. I just don't get why the video was shot at Disneyland. I mean, they got Mickey and Minnie Mouse running around them while they're singing this. Shouldn't they have a postman coming up and giving them letters and stuff? I don't know. I just thought it was weird. But the song itself, fantastic. Number eight on my favorite Carpenter's commercial singles is Please, Mr. Postman. And at number seven, I think the other one that comes up with everybody I talk to, Carpenter, talk to about Carpenter's, Top the World from 1973. Originally released on the singles 1969 to 1973 with the original version the non-countrified version, on a song for you in 1972. Um, Richard didn't have any confidence in doing his own, so own songs as singles until Lynn Anderson had a hit with Top of the World in, earlier in 1973 on the country chart and in, in the lower reaches of the Hot 100. Um, that's when he realized he was missing the boat. He put some country twang to it, and it became an instant hit. It was the only new song that that version was the only new song on the single 69 to 73. And um, it's fantastic. Everybody remembers Top of the World. You can't forget it. Um, it's just a great song all the way around. Very up. Very happy. Very celebratory. I imagine back in the 70s it was probably used for graduations all the time. I don't know. Um, but it was great and fun. And it's been in so many movies and TV shows from clips and stuff. I mean, it showed up in Dark Shadows, for Pete's sake, the Johnny Depp movie. Number uh, number seven, Top of the World, from the singles 1969 to 1973, uh, released in the late, eight, late 1973. Um, number six, Kim's favorite Carpenter song, Rainy Days and Mondays, from 1971, from Carpenters. Um... By this point, they had become very familiar with the Paul Williams, Roger Nichols catalog. Um, they had already done We've Only Just Begun and would do a lot more of their stuff in the future. Um, this song is just amazing. Again, this is another show that, uh, another song that shows Karen's lower range. And it really, it, I mean, it's just full of emotion. And it can really, yeah, rainy days and Mondays always get me down. It can really bring you down. Um, it's a, it's a very, very depressing song, but sung by Karen, it's gorgeous. Number six, Rainy Days and Mondays from Carpenters, 1971. Top five starts with the big hit that, that really helped launch their career. They Long to Be Close to You from 1970 from the Close to You album. Um, all over the chart in the summer, four weeks at number one in the summer of 1970. And absolutely just one of the best songs of all time. Um, there isn't anybody. It comes up every now and then. Uh, Don will occasionally have a single of this for sale on her singles stuff on one of the auctions she does. And everybody ends up singing the whole song practically when they're singing. Because it's that likable. It's that well known. People love this song. And it's a perfect love song. You know, they love just like me, they belong. They belong to be close to you. Um, and the the really amazing thing is this song had been recorded at least four times before, and never was a hit. Dion Warwick did it. Richard Chamberlain did it. Um, a whole bunch of people in the '60s did it. Nobody had a hit with it until Richard rearranged it and parenthesized the "they long to be" part of the title, and boom, great song classic song they long to be close to you from 1970 number five <clears throat> number four on my personal rankings of the commercially released singles in the u.s by the carpenters is the newest of the top five and it is the only single from made in america that i loved touch me when we're dancing from 1981 
it uh, peaked at number 18, I believe, on the chart, um, on the pop chart. I think it hit the top five on the AC chart. Touch Me When We're Dancing, um, also done on the countryside by Alabama, first by Bama and then Alabama. It was, a, I believe they were one of the writers on it. Um, not sure. But this song was a perfect song to reintroduce the Carpenters to America. It should have been a bigger hit. Um, but Made in America was an all-over-the-road pastiche and is not their best album. I, I'm, I got to be honest. Um, I like all the songs, but cohesively, it isn't nearly as good as, as um, you know, earlier albums. So um, I really feel bad that Karen's, that was Karen's final album while she was alive um, because it, it was a lot. It deserved better, and she deserved better. And, but the song at least was one of the best ever. And uh, Touch Me When We're Dancing will always have a great spot in my heart. Number four, Touch Me When We're Dancing from Made in America. Number three, my all-time favorite Carpenter's classic, classic, Superstar. Great Leon Russell wrote it. Bette Midler was known for it, but it was Carpenter's that had the hit for it. And um, this song... You know, when I was little, I didn't get the the background of the story in this song. It's a groupie who had a one-night stand with a performer, and now she thinks she's they're in love with her, and they'll come back to town and whisk her off and take her away, which isn't going to happen. Um, the song is heartbreaking. It's beautiful. Karen's vocals are phenomenal, and um, it's just one of my favorite songs. The only version that comes close to hers is Eric Martin's on his covers album from 2008, I believe it came out. Um, does a great job of it, too. Um, but Karen's is by far the best cover of Superstar ever. Number three on my list. Number two is a song that the Carpenters did not do well with here in America. But it was a big hit in Canada. It was a big hit in Britain and Ireland and Australia. And it peaked to 32 here in the States. Number two, Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft from Passage, released in the fall of 1977. This was definitely not the type of stuff people were used to hearing from Carpenters. It was a recording of the Canadian band Clatoo's first hit. Um, which is why it did well in Canada when Carpenters released it. This became one of their biggest hits in Britain, biggest hits in Ireland, um, Australia. I hit number one, I think, in Ireland. Um, it was a huge song and deserved better than it got in America. The full long version on Passage is eight minutes and something, including the beginning DJ bit with Pony, Tony Peluso. Uh, but... Um, the single version was a little over three and a half minutes and is just phenomenally good. And it is still revered, although it wasn't as big a hit, it is revered by their fans as one of their best songs ever. And uh, it deserves to be. Number two, Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft from Passage, 1977. So, Carpenters fans, have you figured out what number one is yet? If these are just the commercially released singles, then you know what my number one song is. And I've mentioned it actually on my influencers back in January. My all-time favorite Carpenter's song and definitely my all-time favorite Carpenter's single is Only Yesterday from Horizon 1975. Uh, this is another song that didn't do as well. It peaked at number 12 or number 11 on the Hot 100. It did hit the top three on the AC chart. Number one on the TKR chart back then, I'm sure. Um, this is the perfect Carpenter song. The harmonies are here. The chord changes are here. The tempo changes are here. Karen singing in that wonderful low register is here. Um, Only Yesterday is my all-time favorite Carpenter song. I will always love that song more than anything else in the world that they did. And I thought that sounds terrible because everything, practically everything they recorded was good. <laughs> As I said, it wasn't necessarily them. Sometimes it was material like Honolulu City Lights and B-52 
Beechwood 45789 down at the bottom of the list. But Only Yesterday is just fantastic from beginning to end. The harmonies are great. The recording's great. Richard's production work is great. Everything about this song is great. My number one commercially released Carpenter single in the U.S. from 1975's Horizon, Only Yesterday. And Horizon is my favorite album by them, too. I wish there was more to it. And they <clears throat> just Really, it's just eight songs plus two little bookends. But um, Horizon is just, there's not a bad song in the bunch. So it's like, okay. Or not a weak song in the bunch, either. Um, so there you have it. My top 30 ranking of all 30 Carpenters commercially released singles in the U.S., non-holiday singles in the U.S. Now, next week, this is going to get even tougher, and I haven't even started this, so it's going to kill me. I'm going to do the same thing with my top favorite Carpenters album tracks. Saw the songs that were not released as singles. These are only going to, again, these are only going to include Carpenters themselves, nothing by Karen, nothing by Richard, nothing unofficially released like on the box set, just from Ticket to Ride slash Offering through Love Lines. And it has to be group, not single. Some of the ones I mentioned in the special mentioned will be on that list. In fact, two of them are going to be pretty damn high. Um, three of them will be pretty damn high because I love them. Um, but, I, I mean... Carpenters is my all-time favorite act. I mean, they're just a smidge above Hanson and, and Def Leppard. Probably because I was so little when I first saw them. I was six when I first when they had their first hits. And um, they will always be a part of my life, and their music is always a part of my life. And there's so many great album tracks that I can't wait to talk about that next week, too. It's going to be difficult because there's a lot of good stuff out there. And um, we will include on those albums uh, solo stuff by Richard as well as the, the duo and, and stuff from, you know, the two of them from as long as they were included on those, those albums. So it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. It'll be painful for me because I actually have to go on record. But I will be bringing you my 30 favorite Carpenters album tracks, non-single tracks, next week. On Rank This. Hope you've liked this first installment of Rank This, and I hope you will come back and watch it again. It's going to be around the ideas every Thursday. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, thank you. And please leave a comment. Uh, I love talking to you. I'd love to hear your comments on my list, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from Carpenters fans about. Um, you know, well, why isn't this higher? Why isn't this lower? That sucks. This is way better. And that's okay. I'm going to get the same thing next week because, like I said, a kind of hush deserves a better chance than it got. Um, but in any case, um, I hope that you will enjoy this and continue to watch Rank This as I unspeel this is my latest new show. It's going to be fun to do, hard to do sometimes. I can't even fathom the idea of sitting here and trying to go through all Hanson's singles. I did a... 40 best a few years ago and included singles and album tracks I may just revamp that we'll see but um because they've had three albums out since but it's like um I don't know we'll see what happens but for right now uh I do appreciate you watching and um I hope that you will spread the word and let other people know where I'm out here for Rank This I'm TC Kirkham and I will rank more next week ciao baby